I'm David Goff. I'm a member of the Slane GFC club in Mead. I'm an elite panel referee. I'm Ansa Conman from primary school teaching and I work as the Education and Games Development Officer on St. Patrick's campus in DCU. Recently Conor McGregor used the word faggot. Um, were you offended by that? I don't know the man, so to say I'd be offended by it um, would, would be a bit rich. Um, it was an unfortunate choice of words. Um, he should know better as a role model in Irish society, uh, more than Irish society, but worldwide society to so many uh, young people and, and uh, fans in his own code that he shouldn't use language like that. Um, I wasn't f offended by it, but I certainly felt a little bit let down that he felt comfortable in himself to use language like that. Do you think it makes it harder for people Absolutely. Sexual. Every time you hear it, every time you hear it, it's it, it 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 just chips away at you that little bit more. And certainly, when I was in that stage of five or six years of trying to decide to come out, every time there was a joke told in the pub, or every time a comment was made or a derogatory term was made towards someone in the, in the LGBT community, it grated on me that little bit more, and it just made me doubt whether I wanted to take that step and face up to these people in the future. I'd imagine people are more careful of how Way they use their words. Way more careful about how they use the words around me now. I know for me, one of the most difficult things was telling my teammates at home in Slane. Um, I stopped playing club football for a while as, as, as a result, but they were so supportive you know, when, when they found out. And they just said, Davey, look, you're no different than you ever were before. We, we want you back playing. Why did you stop? There's just that perception around myself, um, what my perception of what their thoughts about me you know, what was it going to change? Was there going to be issues in, in the changing room? And uh, just in I terms just, of people taking off clothes, exactly, and stuff like yeah, that. yeah. And I just didn't know how they were going to to um, take to that. It, it's no different, like than being in any 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 changing room. Um, but it was just a fear and and, and an, an irrational fear. But it was something that manifested itself in myself. I probably realised when I left college. Um, at what age? At the, around the age of. 22 before I came back in to do a postgrad here in, in Pats in Education but it still took me probably another another um, six years maybe um, to deal with it's a it's a really difficult um, thing to explain to people who've never gone through it there's this inbuilt fear in you that you're going to let people down for some reason that that you should be ashamed of who you are that um, that for some reason people are going to see you and treat you differently and that's not the case as soon as you take that step into what what is the unknown the weight that's lifted off you is is huge and um, I drove myself into work into refereeing into sport into tennis and um, to keep myself busy and my mind active to stop thinking about it and the worst part for me was 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 driving driving was the one time when I felt that I had time to think. And, and sitting in, in, in the drive home from, from my house in Dublin down to Slane was about 45 minutes to an hour. And it was the worst hour every week. It was like someone had a belt around my chest and they were tightening the belt. The stress was, was huge. And I just couldn't bear it anymore. In January 2011, I just decided that this had to be the end of it. I couldn't, I couldn't live with myself anymore. And once I took that step, just the weight lifted and, and my life moved on around them and so did you feel a little bit like you were lying to people absolutely and I was lying there's no pro point in saying I wasn't but I was lying because I wasn't willing to accept it myself I wasn't able to accept it myself um, and it was much easier to live the lie than face up to the truth at that time no I, I, I when I decided to come out that was it it was made on the decision was made on a Friday afternoon I can still remember it it was the last day of January in, in, in 2011 and I was sitting in my classroom in, in my school in St. Pius's and I had finished my day's work and um, my aunt had asked me to do a reading at her humanist wedding and I was going through a book of readings to try and find something that would signify um, something special in her life, um, her and her partners. And I came across a poem by John O'Donoghue called For the Time of a Necessary Decision. And by the time I had finished reading the poem, I was sitting in a flood of tears at my desk in the classroom. And I knew then that that was the moment that I had to turn around and tell my family 
that I couldn't go on, that now was the time for my necessary decision. And over that weekend, Saturday and Sunday evening, I told all my family. And I came back to Dublin on Sunday evening with a huge weight lifted off my chest. And over the coming weeks then, I told my extended family and, and my friends. Uh, it was quite an emotional couple of weeks, um, not only for me, but for, for, for all those close to me. But it's something that I have very happy and fond memories of. And um, I remember it very fondly for a long time. Could you repeat the passage that you read in that poem? No, it's quite a long poem. But, it, uh, yeah, could you paraphrase it then, maybe? Just um, where, where I suppose the, the, the love that was in you finds calls nothing within you anymore, that you're wandering through this grey space, that your life has no meaning, that you're holding back, and that you need to take... Um, have the courage to take the steps into, into a new beyond, unsure of, of, of what lies um, beyond uh, when you take these steps, but knowing that a, a fresher and newer and more richer life will be there for you if you do take that leap. One or two friends I lost over it, um, you know, that weren't happy with, with, with uh, the situation about uh, being gay. Um, their friends, I suppose, are they truly your friends if, 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 if that's their, their, their belief and their outlook? And now that they know something personal about you that they never knew before. And um, so I, I did lose a certain number of friends, and that, that's regrettable. But, um, you know, I made so many more on, on my new journey. So, uh, you know, I'm quite happy that I had the opportunity to, to tell people. And is there a sense that, okay, a relief that finally I can just be myself? Yeah, there's a huge sense of relief that you don't have to watch yourself anymore to see, you know, if you're giving away something, if it's a, a way you stand or a way you look at someone or, a, a, you know, a lingering glance or, you know, even, you know, the fear of walking down to Capel Street and turning into Panty Bar instead of the boar's head, you know, did someone see you going into Panty Bar, you know, and that they're very real fears, but I don't have to worry about those anymore, and that's a huge relief. You know, for for anyone. But you'd imagine, like, are there a lot of? Do you think there are a lot of gay people involved in GA that are? are yeah, there has quiet? to be. Like, I mean, the stats, stats just don't add up. Yeah. But as I said, I know the very difficult and personal journey I had to go on to to get there. Um, and I'm sure different people are on different paths in that journey, and whether they decide to take that step is 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 each to their own. So just back to the perceived matchiness of the GA world and. You, is it down to everyone has that personal journey to get to the point of where they're going to be openly gay if they are that way, or is it is there a bit is there possibly a bit of a, a barrier there that they're stopping people coming out because they're in the GEA world? I don't know because uh, you know I would have been fearful um, in my own time and there would have been certain barriers for me. Um, inter county players uh, and their setups are completely different to the to the setup we have in, in, in Crow Park and I don't know what barriers they would face. Um, certainly there is um, an acceptance that a referee would get a certain amount of flack from, from, from fans on both sides. A player opening himself up to a certain um, amount of flack from opposition supporters because of one particular part of his personal life is that wise for a player to do maybe maybe not I don't know but I'd like to think that Ireland has moved on as a community that the fans have moved on as a community and that they would be more welcoming of of what would be um, you know a role model in Irish society if it ever does happen